All right, everyone. So um, I hope you all have high energy because we are talking about chapter 13, which is going to be about the basics of electricity. In this chapter, you're going to learn about the basics of um, electrical safety, how to be safe around electricity, and some common terms used. You're also going to cover the types of electric currents that we use in a lot of the facial treatments, and we're going to touch upon some of the machines that we use um, for skincare. So, um, you know, I know a lot of students always wonder why do we have to learn this? I always thought this was interesting but kind of boring. And it's because that we really need to know two things. We need to know that electricity is a gift that we have. It's something we kind of take for granted. Um, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and I want you all to imagine what life must have been like in the 1800s and early 1900s as a hairdresser before electricity became so commonplace and so practical. Could you imagine having to do hair, shampoo hair, style hair, set hair when you did not have access to electricity. Now you can shampoo someone's hair, blow them out quickly in like 10 minutes or under. This was not the case back in the day. You used to have to um, either have them air dry or set the hair with something or just style the hair when it was dry and dirty and it gave you a very dingy look. If you see those beautiful pictures from the 1800s, very few people had good looking hair. Those that knew how to take care of their hair and knew the science did. Um, electricity was a new thing when it was discovered and through a lot of um, trials and errors and humongous fails we learned how to hone it and how to make it safer. Watch the documentary Hidden Killers of the Victorian Home and the Edwardian Home, especially the Edwardian episode, and then Hidden Killers of the Post-World Home because it covers electricity and how people are big DIY um, people. If you come from an Italian family like I do, you'll know that all the Italian men, and I'm guilty of this, we try to fix everything ourselves. Um, it's just in our nature. My grandpa is the same way and it does put us at risk. Um, one of the best examples I can give is re recently, probably about four, no longer than four, back in October, um, actually a few months ago, back in October before Halloween, he decided to fix a space heater and he tried to re rewire it himself and he told my grandma, oh yeah, I fixed it, don't worry, this and that. Well, I was downstairs with my grandma, the lights were flickering on and off, the TV was flickering, you would have thought it was the apocalypse. We heard my cousin scream from upstairs and what had happened was the space heater had blown out. It actually arced and it fused um, inside the metal prong to the uh, socket and there was a big charred mark. I gotta see if I can find a way to edit in some photos of what it looked like, but it was really scary. It was a huge learning lesson that this is nothing to play around with, electricity is serious. I'm also gonna cover certifications. You wanna buy lights from the salon, lamps from the salon from a reputable source. When I worked in retail at TJ Maxx and Home Goods, we did have a lot of recalls and lights because they weren't UL certified. And I think I used the right term. Let me just check. Yep, UL certified. And what that means is that you run the risk of having um, a fire. Uh, we had, I remember years ago, we had a pole lamp. It was the octo lamp. So it's a pole lamp with these eight little heads and you can bend them and bend the lights in different directions. The type of bulb was a halogen bulb and halogen, while it produces a pure white light, it also produces a lot of heat. So what had happened was the silicone coating around it was not um, fireproof or didn't have any flame retardants. And what had happened was it actually melted the um, silicone to the bulb and it was sizzling. Some of the um, glop almost hit the cord. That could have started a fire. So it's really important to know some basic safety. I also want to touch upon this chapter and tell you that one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see students do this, when they have a hot dryer and they wrap the cord around the front of the dryer. Oh, it makes me so mad. I tell them you should take it do the S shape, twirl it up, and tie it up. I get so nitpicky with that, and that's the only thing that really drives me crazy. Um, but anyhow, check out these fun facts that a lightning bolt travels through the air at speeds of up to 60,000 miles per hour. When you touch something and get a static shock, that's a form of electricity. You know, if you ever pump gas, um, you have to touch the metal first, get all the electricity out of you, because you don't want to be pumping that flammable gas and have a spark and, you know, have everything go boom. Also know that electricity travels very fast. Um, 1,086,000 miles, 186, miles per second. If you were to travel that fast, you can go around the world eight times in a few seconds. That would only take you to turn on a light switch. That, that's how fast the energy is. It's very powerful. So, you know, when you look at, um, the book gives the example of looking on lightning in a stormy night, you'll see the effects of electricity. If you um, plug in a poorly wired, wired application with a socket, it'll spark and, you know, smoke you're seeing the effects of electricity. You're actually not seeing electricity itself. Electricity is not matter because it does not occupy space or have any weight that we can measure. So electricity is defined as the movement of particles around an atom that creates pure energy. It is a form of energy that exhibits magnetical, chemical, or thermal effects when in motion. An electrical current is the flow of electricity along a conductor. 
All materials can be classified as a conductor or non-conductors. Non-conductors are also called insulators. Conductor is any material that conducts electricity. Most metals are good conductors. It's something that's going to speed it up. So for example, if you're swimming um, in a uh, pool and there's a lot of minerals or metals in the water, if that lightning strikes the pool, you're getting barbecued. A non-conductor is something that's called an insulator and it's a material that does not transmit electricity. Rubber is the best example. Silk, wood, and glass, and cement are also good insulators. A good example is when you think about if you open up a cord, you'll have those twisted metal wires, the conductors, and then the non-conductors or insulator is the rubber covering. An electrical circuit is the path of electricity from negative to positive in one circle. There's a flow of energy right there. There's two types of currents, and I love 80s music like ACD say, AC, AC, I always said that wrong. Ooh, I combined the words. AC, DC. Um, AC, the alternating current, and DC, the direct current. Your DC, the direct current, is the constant, even flowing electricity current that travels in one direction and is produced by chemical means. Flashlights, mobile phones, cordless, cordless hairstyling tools are the use of uh, direct current batteries. The battery in your car is also a direct current. Most of our, um, you know, most of our what is it, um, tools don't use DC, they actually use AC. So your direct current will use a converter. It's an apparatus that changes direct current to an alternating current. Converters usually have a plug and a cord. They allow you to plug appliances in outside the salon or at your home that normally would have to be plugged into an electric wall or outlet. The mobile phone charger in a car is a good example of a converter. An alternating current is abbreviated AC is a rapid interrupted current flowing first in one direction and then the opposite direction. It is produced by mechanical means and changes directions 60 times per second. Corded hair dryers, curling irons, electric, um, what this said, electric files? I don't know what that is. Oh, electric files, like electric nail file. Table lamps, table lamps that plug into wall outlets use alternating currents. A rectifier is an apparatus that changes alternating currents AC to DC. So know that um, a rectifier makes your AC to a DC and a converter changes um, DC to AC. These are devices that so you can you know convert them. Um, they're not as common, usually you're one or the other. Um, cordless electric clippers, mobile phone chargers, use a rectifier to change the AC from electric wall outlet to DC needed to recharge your battery. The reason you do this is you don't want to overvolt something because that can cause a fire or an explosion um, or you know put yourself at risk. Um, I just also want to put this out there. Um, raise your hand if you have ever been shocked. I was shocked when I was probably in like fourth grade. I had a Game Boy SP, which is like a square Game Boy. I had it plugged into the wall and I don't know what happened, but I turned it on and I felt it vibrate and I felt like this really weird surge like go through my body and I was like, Mrrr! and like I blew back. My hair was like poofed we had a babysitter that was there for like the day and she called my mom and like freaked out like, you know, Vinny got electrocuted. My mom was like, what? But that all happened like for some weird reason. It's a very painful and very um, scary experience if you've ever been shocked. So he'll read the chart right here that your direct current, your DC is going to be a constant even flow, travels in one direction, and it's produced by chemical means, usually through a battery. Your alternating current is a rapid interrupted flow, travels in two directions, and it's produced by mechanical means. You also want to know that we know the types of electricity, we also have a way to measure them. So they can be measured in different um, ways. Voltage, um, also abbreviated as a V. Ampers, abbreviated as an A. Um, milliampers, abbreviated MA. Ohm, abbreviated O. Watt, abbreviated W. And kilowatt, abbreviated K. Know that um, the difference between um, a few volts can mean like a little static shock to getting blown across the wall to being fried and barbecued. Um, a volt is known as voltage. It's a unit of measure of the pressure or force that pushes the electric current forward. Car batteries are 12 volts. Um, most air conditioners and clothes dryers run in 220 volts. The higher the voltage, the more power. Your ampers, also known as amp, is a unit that measures the strength of an electrical current. Um, Usually, a hair dryer rated at 12 amps must have a cord twice as thick and one rated at 6 amps, otherwise the cord might overheat and start a fire. You have to have a bigger size to um, accommodate a higher amp. A higher amp rating indicates a greater number of electrons and a stronger current. A milliamper, abbreviated MA, is 
one one thousandth of an amper. Um, the current used for facials and scalp treatment is measured in milliampers. An amper current would be way too strong and that would make the facials and um, scalp treatments electrifying in a bad way. That would be very uncomfortable, it would almost burn. Um, an ohm is the unit of measurement, measures the resistance of electrical current. Currents will not flow through conductors unless the force vol um, volts is stronger than the resistance, ohms. A watt is abbreviated W, the unit that measures how much electricity is being used in one second. A 40 watt light bulb uses 40 watts of energy per second. A kilowatt abbreviated K is a thousand watts. The electricity in your house is measured in kilowatts per hour. A 1000 watt, um, one kilowatt hair dryer uses a thousand watts of energy per second. So putting this in perspective, read the fact, bo fact box that says one kilowatt per hour will power a television for three hours, run a 100 watt bulb for 12 hours, and keep an electric clock ticking for three months. That is how powerful um, you know a kilowatt is, even though it sounds like minuscule. You don't need to know too much about that, but you wanna know that you need to have um, good smarts electricity, and a lot of it is common sense. I'm sure you guys know that your, you know, your blow dryer, your bathtub are not best friends, that we shouldn't play with the socket at our age, hopefully, that playing electric pranks on people is not nice. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, electrical equipment and safety. If you're not safe, you can cause um, injury to yourself, someone else, or cause the whole salon to burn down and then you'll be responsible for eating that bill. Um, careless electrical connections can override and overload circuits resulting in electric shock, burn, or even a serious fire. Know that um, Underwriters Laboratories, UL, certifies the safety of electrical appliances. Um, curling irons, hair dryers, electrical clippers, UV lamps, pedicure chairs, heating mitts, and electrical files should all be UL approved. This means they are safe um, when used according to the manufacturer's directions, and you always want to look for that UL symbol. Um, know that a wire that is not large enough to carry the electrical current passing through it will overheat. Um, heating element in your hair dryer or curling iron heats up because it is not large enough to carry the electric current. Heating elements are designed to overheat. Heating elements are designed to overheat and are safe when used properly, but when electrical wires in the wall overheat, they can cause a fire. If excessive current passes through a circuit or fuse, the circuit will break. Or breaker turns off the the circuit breaker will turn off the electric current to prevent overheating. Um, you will have two types of devices that prevent this. What this means is that your blow dryer naturally gets very hot because it's putting out energy, but it's made in a way to do that in a controlled way. When you do have issues, you also run the risk of, um, you know, if the wall can't handle it, you can override the circuits. Like if you've got five blow dryers plugged in, you'll blow the circuit. That's what we say now. Um, back in the day, it used to be called blowing the fuse. We typically don't see fuses anymore. They tend to be seen in homes that are a little bit more antique, a little bit more older. Circuit breaker, a majority of salons have a circuit breaker unless you're working like an old Victorian building that has not been renovated um, internally. A fuse prevents excessive current from passing through a circuit. It is designed to blow out or melt when the wire becomes too hot from overloading the circuit with too much current, such as when too many appliances or faulty equipment are connected to an electricity source. Um, to reestablish this, you'll disconnect everything and replace it. You don't have to do this yourself. Um, there's gonna be no test on this. Just know that um, it's very old school and it was very tedious. Look up photos of a blown fuse and you'll see like what a pain in the butt that was to go in there and fix it. A circuit breaker is a switch that automatically interrupts or shuts off an electric circuit at the first indication of an overload. Circuit breakers have replaced fuses in modern electrical circuits. They have all the safety features of fuses, but do not require replacement and you can simply and can simply be reset by switching the circuit breaker back on. Your own hair dryers and irons actually have a circuit breaker on them, so if they click off, you have to click them back on and then use them. That's a safety feature to prevent you from getting shocked. To put things in um, a more visual way, think about, since I've been watching Freaky Friday, I was bored watching some old early 2000s movies. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, it's a really cool video about mom and daughter switch bodies. And in one scene, you know, the mom doesn't like how the daughter's jamming out with her guitar. So she goes in the garage, she sees a circuit breaker. I mean, the basement, she sees a circuit breaker and she just clicks it. Um, a lot of parents that don't want their kids playing video games will do that, they'll turn it off. It's kind of mean, but it works. And they're um, less tedious and easy to use. Um, we have one at my grandparents' house and it keeps blowing, so we have to be very careful. Like, if we have the space heater on, we can't plug in the hairdryer and it becomes like tedious. Um, every house has their own um, ability to tolerate that. 
Grounding um, will complete an electric circuit and carries the current safely away. It's another um, way to practice safety. Uh, all electric appliances that have two rectangular electrical connections or prongs in the plug. Um, you'll see that with the two prongs, one is slightly longer than the other. This guarantees the plug can be inserted into an outlet one way and protect you and your client from an electric shock in the event of a short circuit. For added protection, some of them have a three prong plug. Just know that the three prong plug is extra safe. Uh, guidelines for safe use of electrical equipment. Um, salon fires are usually caused by electrical problems such as shorts in the wiring and building or improper use of items such as appliances, extension cords, and plugs. You want to pay careful attention to the um, you know, electrical safety. Make sure you read the book on it. Um, what was I going to say? If you really think back in the day, and even some salons that they shouldn't do this, um, they'll actually smoke in the salon still. If you really think about it, what it was like back in the day, we still had hazards. Um, a lot of fires back then were caused by smoking in the salon. Stylists that would smoke, you know, all it took was like one cigarette and maybe accidentally spraying some hairspray and then someone's hair goes poof or you leave it down somewhere and something can catch fire. Now, a lot of the times, um, fires are caused in the salon because you're not smoking in the salon anymore. It's caused by uh, leaving stuff unplugged, leaving stuff in. At the school that I teach at, we did have one incident where someone had left an iron in the um, metal uh, area. I don't know, it was like a tube. At each style of station for the students, they had their own, and the iron was a little too small, so it was able to go in there, and the heat of it just got so hot, it actually started to melt the plastic, and it started to smolder, so it was really scary. The teacher who was in that room had to take the iron, run it out, toss it out, and like douse water on it to get it to you know quell. But that's how serious it can be. So you always want to make sure that if I have a hot tool, I lay it on a flat surface um, with a, they have an iron safety you can like rest your iron on and I let it cool that way. Um, you want to make sure your appliances are certified. I'm just going to read you guys some of these tips. Uh, disconnect all appliances when not in use. Inspect them thoroughly. Keep the wires um, in good repair. Use only one plug in each outlet. Overloading can cause a circuit breaker to pop. Um, Avoid contact with water and metal surfaces with electricity. Uh, keep the cords on the floor away from everyone's feet and do not leave your kind unattended when connected to an electrical device. Do not attempt to clean around electrical outlets when equipment is plugged in. Um, kind of common sense there. Um, do not touch metal objects at the same time if either is connected to an electrical current. Do not step on or place objects on electrical cords and do not allow electrical cords to become twisted. This can cause a short circuit. Uh, don't attempt to repair electrical appliance. That is something my grandpa and I should read. Um, or if you know anyone who's had an electrical fail at home, leave it to the professionals, go to a store and they'll help you out. Um, also know that older buildings in the home may only have two pronged wall outlets. There's special converters you can buy where you can plug the two prong in there and it has a space for a three prong one. Um, that's usually a safer way. A person in a hardware st store will know more and how to help you with that. Um, I'm gonna give you guys your five minute break and we're gonna to try to finish this up with electrotherapy and some types of light and lasers and that should be it for everything.